in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed are we together critics and naysayers confirm that you are making notable progress in life but they can also be used to caution you from decline and to caution you from destruction. I repeat one last time, you will need both supporters and critics. Unfortunately, you don't have to invite any of them. They come on their own. This is what makes it painful. No sane man will invite naysayers to their lives the system was designed to bring both. So on one hand, they are calling you king of kings while they are eating the bread that was multiplied. Then a few weeks later, they curse you to your face and say, release Barabbas instead of this one. Let his blood be on our children. And Jesus was silent and he looked at them with compassion. He even said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Is someone learning? By this teaching, when you see anyone who you perceive to be an overcomer, now you can respect them. These are the keys, painful keys, you see, painful keys. So when you look at fathers of faith, like our father in the Lord, Daddy Adeboe, you imagine at 81, turning 82, that's how old he has been criticized. That's how old he may have been misunderstood. But that man you see right there is a testament of endurance. Our father, Daddy Onibogu, who comes here all the time you see him, he's turning 85 now. 85 years old. There are people who cannot survive two months in an organization. They pray and they fast for that position. They become a director and in two weeks, they have 39 mails full of insults. They say, I want to leave this office. What is this? Yet someone was sitting there for 16 years and thanking God every Sunday. <laughs> One of the ways God helps you is by giving you your desires. If you insist, he will give you. Lord, I must become a senator. What is there in, in taking care of a constituency? I know I can do it. And God says, be careful. I know all these people, they are just thieves and I'm robbers. And God answers your prayer by helping you to win election. As soon as you get there, you discover that the amount of insults you get from those who are entitled alone. You want to leave that office. Have you noticed all those who become presidents, they live quietly? Have you noticed in Nigeria and across the globe? There is nobody who leaves that place just rejoicing and saying one mm -mm, quietly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you seen many who work in certain organizations? By the time they're about to retire, they are quiet. They give thanks to God. Those who are waiting for that position, the people who are not even fighting, no problem. Just allow me to retire and go. And then the person who gets in there, he gets in there with zeal. Don't worry. In 10 days, I will transform this organization. And after two years... They look for every man of God they can find. Something must be going wrong. Nothing is wrong. That's how it is. That's how it is. That's how it is. Lord, you must give me triplets. I don't want just a child. And someone is saying, don't worry. You I want triplets. And God says, all right, answer her prayer. Then the triplets come. And you don't know what to do with yourself after two months. You call all your friends. They say, sorry, we are busy. And you say, you are wicked. We say, no, no, no. Just do your thing. It's your cross. Carry it. I once listened to a message years ago. I think it's by T.D. Jakes or so. 
can you stand to be blessed very powerful message it takes stamina to sustain the blessing many people are praying for what is bigger than them there are things you call delay but it's the mercy of God to prepare you first so that what you are praying for does not become what kills you number six koinonia for you number what seven are you ready ah this one you need to listen to it in the name of jesus christ there are three groups of people you must be aware of it requires great wisdom to deal with these people please i want you to write this and learn lessons from an overcomer these are destiny defining principles there are three groups of people you will always find around your life it will take a lot of wisdom and discretion to deal with them otherwise you will never arrive at the place of destiny are you ready number one wicked people don't worry you just write trust me are you ready let's talk about wicked people unfortunately you may not be able to drive them indefinitely from your life. You will find them in your neighborhood. You will find them around your organization. And sometimes, as painful as it is, they will be too useful to be thrown away completely. Wicked people. I want to teach you something that you'll be grateful for. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 18. There are three groups of people. This is a lesson coming from an overcomer. A heart that devise wicked imaginations. Part of the six things that the Lord hates. A feet that be swift in running to mischief. Let's read Proverbs chapter 4, please. From verse 14 to 17. Wisdom is coming for someone now. In the name of Jesus. It says, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Uh-huh. Avoid it, he says. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. 16. The Bible says, For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away until they cause someone to fall. Verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. There are people like that on earth. Believe me. I'm not just trying to be negative. There are people who have chosen to partner with the devil to be wicked. An evil heart it is called. There are wicked people in our world. There are wicked people around your organization. There are wicked people in church. There are wicked people in society. It is not within your power to drive them away. You have to sustain the wisdom to need them. Some of those wicked people are your superiors for now. You must learn to work with them. Some of those wicked people, are, they come in various forms. Believers must be educated to know how to deal with wicked people. Number two. The second of the three groups of people you must be aware of if you want to enjoy the life of an overcomer is selfish people. I will tell you the difference shortly, but please write. Number one, wicked people. Number two, selfish people. Who are they? Who are these groups of people called selfish? Now, please watch this. Selfish people are not necessarily evil people. They are just people who are indifferent about your state, provided they get what they are looking for. The character of selfishness is that it does not mind who is wounded in the process. The most important thing for a selfish person is obtaining your desire. It does not matter who dies. It does not matter who cries. It does not matter who is in pain. A selfish person does not see anything at their side. All they see is what they desire. They want it so bad. It does not matter who dies. They will betray family for it. They want it so bad. They will do anything provided it ends with them achieving it. Are we together now? 
A selfish person has no business harming you if there is nothing that becomes a point of conflict between both of you. You may even look like an ally for a while. Unfortunately, you will find these people everywhere. And I'm hoping and praying with all my heart that you are not one of those people. Number three. Are you ready for the third? Ignorant slash naive people. Write it down and I'll explain. Ignorant slash naive people. Naive is spelled N-A-I-V-E. Naive people. What does it mean to be naive? To show lack of consciousness. To show lack of experience. Are we together? To show lack of wisdom, lack of maturity, lack of judgment. There are people who are void of that level of maturity. They are called naive. A naive person is like a notebook that nothing has been written on. That's what makes them dangerous. Because they become whatever is suddenly written there. The easiest people to deceive are not wicked people. They are the deceivers themselves. They are not selfish people, but naive people. Now, let me tell you this. When Satan wants to destroy you, the greatest tool he needs is a wicked person. If he cannot find a wicked person, he will make do with a selfish person. If he cannot find a selfish person, he will make do with a naive person. All three can cause the same harm to your life. The difference is that a wicked person does his wickedness from a premeditated standpoint. So before and after your pain, they are happy. It was the plan. A selfish person like Judas is focused on making money out of Jesus, not with the intention for Jesus to die. Usually, when the harm is done and what they are looking for, they now have, then they have the conscience to regret. And they say, but I didn't want it to go this far. Have you heard of people who beat someone till the person died? And when they are in police custody, they will tell you the plan was not to kill the person. I arranged the kidnap of the person so that I would get 10 million. I didn't plan that the person will die. Wicked people, selfish people, ignorant or naive people can be tools that can become a disaster to your life except and unless you sustain the wisdom to live with them. Unfortunately for the rest of your life, you will be immersed in the midst of these kinds of people every day, including tomorrow, including forever. You would think that because Jesus was the son of the living God, he would not have these kinds of people around him. They were among his disciples, unfortunately. They were among the scribes and the Pharisees. They were among the members of his congregation. They were among the onlookers. And for the rest of his life on earth, Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus, as the word of God, the word God incarnate, he lived in the midst of these people. Do you know, all these three people, I don't have the time to show you, I would have shown you that all these three people played a role together and made the death of Jesus possible. Even though we know now that it was the hidden wisdom of God, but these three groups of people, the naive people who said crucify him, let his blood be upon our heads. The scribes and the Pharisees who plotted it intentionally and Judas who wanted to make money out of Jesus, not to destroy him. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. If you do not sustain the wisdom <laughs> to walk with these people, you will get into trouble. Hallelujah especially naive people i hope you know that the first fall was because of this the woman you call eve eve did not fall because she was a wicked woman no she was beguiled i think it's second corinthians 11 and verse 3 did i get that right please give it to us but i fear that's right lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve through subtlety you see that now so your mind should be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. Satan comes to a naive woman 
and begins to sell a narrative and sell an idea how many good people have been turned into wicked people because they were so naive it is the reason why believers must be trained and be mentored there are people today who have been made to steal they are not thieves they were just naive there are many young boys today that have been made to join terrorist groups by the time they catch these boys some of them are barely teenagers in their early adulthood and you would find out they were just indoctrinated with extremist views they were not wicked people by default they were not selfish people by default they were just naive uneducated inexposed people who became victims of the desire and the plan of others I'm praying for you whatever will make you a prey in the hand of Satan and in the hand of wicked men I'm praying in the name of Jesus may God not allow that thing come around your life tonight's message may not apply to everybody there are people who are too innocent to benefit from this message they have not grown enough to see the value of this message there are teachings that you need to archive you may not understand the implication till you rise beyond certain levels. Then you will rush and look at that message. There are those who this is a description of the season that they found themselves in. Hallelujah. Three groups of people. This one, it was a direct teaching that the Holy Spirit taught me. I did not read it in any book. These three groups of people. As much as possible, you keep praying and sanitizing your environment, but you have to get used to it. The cosmos is filled with a mixed multitude. Believers are just a portion of those on earth. Did the Bible not tell you not all men have faith? That means don't expect everybody to say, God bless you. You find God bless you in church, but you will not find God bless you everywhere. There are people who will honor you and say, Apostle, God bless you. But there are other people who are, who are vicious and wicked. There are others who are selfish. Unfortunately, this selfishness has spilled even to spouses, spilled into leaders. There are people who will not mind their entire families go down with all due respect, provided they go forward. There are parents who will not mind their children becoming prostitutes, provided they return with money for them to eat. The Lord will show us mercy in Jesus' name. Can I still give you one more? <laughs> I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your benefits. I'm reminded, I just raised that song because of a story that I heard, true story of a woman who arranged a kidnap of one of her loved ones by herself. Arranged that kidnap and was joining all the people to cry too. How many young boys today talk to armed robbers and say, my father has money in this other room, the second one. And when the armed robbers come, plus the boy, they tell him to lie down too. And he will lie down and you will think he's innocent. By the time they carry the money is when, is the, is when the sharing formula goes wrong. Usually that's where people just scatter everything. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you making reference to my teaching the seeing eyes anybody who you have drawn to your life and is holding a sword you cannot see on your neck i'm crying unto my god tonight may god open your eyes to see this night may god open your eyes to see this night listen in this world bar if god does not show you mercy you will be helping to hold the knife that will kill you and not know I'm not I'm not planting fear this is wisdom this is how life works whenever you see an overcomer there are men who know this 
that among all the people who say apostles are, yes, sir, yes, ma, your majesty, you are the greatest man of God in the world. Among those mixed multitudes, you must have the intelligence to discern that there are wicked people, there are selfish people, there are naive people. But like I taught you when I taught you on destiny help us, I'm happy to also announce to you that there are sincere people. Do not think everyone is out to destroy you. No. Don't allow your pain stop you from knowing that there are sincere people. Don't throw the baby and the bad water. I need to balance this before we get to the last point. There are sincere people. I pray you become one of them. That you become a breath of fresh air to someone. And that the person will say, from the day you came into my life, you healed me from the pain of 20 years. I never believed that there would be Christians who could be sincere. But thank God for the gift of you. I'm praying again for someone who came to church saying, God, please bring a good friend to my life. I'm tired of people piercing me. I've spent my life with injuries from betrayals. May my God, who is also your God, send sincere people to you. Can I tell you, sincere people have a therapeutic effect. When you find godly and sincere people, you can sleep with your eyes closed. And the thing about life and about God is one sincere pe person can bring the healing, the healing that hundred people may have caused for you. There are sincere people. Burn this at the back of your mind. Probably you are seated next to one. There are sincere people. Don't draw a conclusion from your years of pain and betrayal, from your years of whatever. Oh, they cheated me in business. Oh, church people are terrible. All pastors are demons. They just, no, don't conclude like that. There are still sincere people. There are still sincere people. This is a prophetic message for someone. Are there still good men? Yes. Are there still good women? Yes. Are there still good parents? Yes. Are there still good politicians? Yes. Are there still good leaders? Yes. Are there still good men of God? Yes. Are there still sincere Christians? Yes. If you are not part of that sincere army, there is room for you to join. But do not conclude that all men are evil. You may be wrong. There are evil men. There are selfish men. There are naive men. But my goodness, there are men who are called gifts. When they come into your life, in a moment, believe me when I tell you this. This ministry, Koinonia, you see, has enjoyed the ministry of such men. There are a few of these men God has brought in my own life. Truly, you can call them consolations by God. And Adam had children, he knew his wife, he had Cain and Abel. What did Abel do for Cain to kill him? Cain killed Abel and was arguing with God. You can imagine the pain of that loss in the heart of Eve. But then the Bible says it beautifully. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore Seth. And the Bible says men began to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm praying for you one more time. Maybe to a preacher who has been badly wounded betrayed by the people around you maybe some parents you have trusted people and they went to your back and caused you pain your heart is bleeding right now you've lost money you've lost trust you shared secrets about your life with people and they made a shipwreck of your destiny as a consolation may my God send true gifts to your life may my God send good people to your ministry to your business, to your organization, in the name of Jesus Christ. Number eight, lessons from an overcomer. The eighth and final destiny defining principle that I want you to learn tonight is this. Define the most important things in your life, not everything is worth dying for define the most important things in your life and I will guide you not everything is worth dying for please
this. Don't kill yourself unnecessarily. There are things that are not worth dying for. Eighth principle. Define the most important things in your life. Not everything is worth dying for. There are people who have died today. If they have the opportunity to come back, they will smack themselves at the cheek and say it was not worth it. I can tell you, everything in life does not hold equal value. You will never rise to the state of an overcomer and you would have wasted the lesson from your, your discussion with an overcomer if you do not know this. All great people, all champions in the spirit, in ministry, in organizations and in life, they know some of them have learned from their many years of pain that not everything in life is worth dying for. I have studied the subject of fulfillment myself and I have taught you a few teachings around fulfillment. I refer you to two of my teachings. One, what seekest thou? Number two, the law of seasons. But in my studying the subject of success and fulfillment, I found out at the end of my study and gleaning from the wisdom of fathers and champions indeed, that there are only three things that are worth dying for. The most important thing in your life is defined as what you can die for, not what you are living for. The most important things in your life are defined not just because you are living for them, but that you can die for them. Anything you cannot die for is not that important. Don't let it give you heart attack. There are people today carrying self-inflicted health, health concerns because they have put themselves in positions where they do not, they have not defined the most important things. Can I share with you my perspective about the three most important things in your life? Number one, your relationship with Jesus. This is the first thing that is worth dying for. Not just living for. It is worth dying for. If you can only live for Jesus, you are not serious. Genuine love is demonstrated in the ability to both live and if need be, die for a cause. Your relationship with Jesus, Mark chapter 8, 35 to 37. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Give us that scripture. Mark 8, 35. For whatsoever, whosoever will save his life. Is that in your Bible? He shall lose it. But whatsoever shall lose, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Reading to 37. For what shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Ladies and gentlemen, your relationship with Jesus is the guarantee of your eternal destiny. It should be the most important thing in your life. It's not a preacher's manipulation. No. 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 I don't care what you have. I don't care what you do well in. If Jesus is not at the epicenter of your life, you have not defined your priorities right. Number two. What is the second thing worth dying for? Your family. Both biological and spiritual. Family is worth dying for. When Job lost everything in his life, the only thing that was left was family. Business could not stand the test of time. Reputation could not stand the test of time. Assets, as we call them, could not stand the test of time. At the end of his life, only one woman stood by his side. 
And even that woman stood there in her pain. And she said, why do you hold on to your integrity? Job, you're my husband, but curse God and die. But at least she stood by him. Can I tell you? Respect those who can see all your limitations and still love you for who you are. Not everybody has that patience. If you do not respect those who have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, and still love you the way you are, you are making a big mistake. Worth dying for, Jesus and the gospel. Worth dying for, family. Now, I know that a lot of people say all kinds of things about church, and they are largely right. Oh, church is full of hypocrites. Church is full of this. But can I tell you, the safest place you can ever be spiritually is the house of God. In the midst of all of all these stories here and there, you will still find people who love you in church. You will still find those who will cry with you in church. If you think I'm joking, lose a loved one or let something happen. And that's when you will know that many people are selfish. It is in church you will find someone who does not know you, but just seeing you cry can come to you and say, what is the matter? Can I help you? Don't get used to wicked people and think everyone is wicked. In church, there are good people. There are all kinds of vessels. Vessels of clay, vessels of wood, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold. Many years ago, I made a commitment with my life that aside being a man of God, one of my greatest goals in life is to be a shoulder for as many wounded people. Beyond being a man of God, my greatest testimony is not just that I, I was or I am a great man of God, but that someone, I'm not called to solve everybody's problem, but the, the much that I can do, not little, the much that I can do, if I can use my life to wipe somebody's tears, it may not be the best, but it was not the worst. You see, we're not called to do everything. When it has to do with being there for people, you don't need ordination. You don't need education. You just need a good heart. There are things you will need qualification to do. Showing love and kindness is not one of those. Educated or otherwise, you can show love and kindness. Are we together? Wealthy or otherwise, you can show love or kindness. When it has to do with love and kindness, gender does not necessarily matter. Age may not matter. Our world is full of bleeding people, bleeding preachers. I once saw a photo, I think it was on YouTube or so, I can't remember what I was looking for. And then I saw, I think it was a, a, a graphic representation of something. And a man who was holding on to his small son, shielding the son from some, something or so. And there were all kinds of arrows on that man. I said, how true. Some of you never know what men of God go through. The stress, the pain, the internal crisis, having their own issues that they have to throw away. This is true for preachers. This is true for leaders. And most times, the church sometimes can be full of very ungrateful people. They do not know that every sermon you hear comes from a standpoint of blood, tears, and sacrifice. How about leaders? You come to your workplace and you see ideas that keep scaling that organization, not knowing that someone lost sleep for that idea to come about. I'm praying for you that you will train your spirit to respect greatness when you see it. There is no gift of greatness in the Bible. Greatness is a cumulative of this journey. And tonight we are learning lessons from an overcomer so that you will become one yourself. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata bako tos koto preka teka leka pa. The phase of development, Lord.
grant me the discipline 